Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just wanna say thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, click the subscribe in the bottom corner. It's free and very much appreciated. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about smart trainers. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what smart trainers are. You probably do, but just in case you don't, there's something like I have here. This is the Saris H3 smart trainer. It hooks up, you hook up a cassette to it and hook your bike up to it and it conveys information to a computer or your phone via Bluetooth and can uh, you can basically monitor your speed and power output. Super slick uh, idea and uh, really pumped that I have the opportunity to test out this Saris H3 trainer. Uh, we got the Cobain finally built and it'll fit on here nicely. The Roscoe with the Boost 141 rear axle could not fit on here. So this again, like I said, is a Saris H3 smart trainer. So basically you're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put a cassette on this. So this does have uh, end caps, like I said, it comes from the factory when you first get it with it, it'll fit for a 135 rear axle. So we can convert that. We can just take these out and then replace them. They, they send some uh, different end caps there's the Boost 148 ones that we're gonna use and also some of the other standards if you have like, uh, I guess, what a 12 by 142 or something like that. So you are gonna need a five millimeter Allen to remove these end caps off of here. They just screw off, screw that off of there. Same with this side over here. And then we just go ahead and put the Boost 148 end caps on. And again, they just screw on there like so. And then we're set up for Boost 148, which will be good for most mountain bikers out there. So now we're gonna go ahead and put a cassette on here. So set this down on its side. Now we can just go ahead and put this cassette on here. I just have a, an old Sunrace cassette that I had here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on just like you'd put on any regular cassette. So yeah, I'm wanting to do an enduro ride or enduro race this year, at least one enduro race. So getting on this trainer early in the season, I think will be really helpful. I know in past season it feels like it's the end of the year when I finally get in half decent pedaling shape and then the season is over. So we'll just go ahead and tighten this down like you would any other cassette. And it's good to go. All right, so we got that on there now. Just showing this, how this, this uh, Saris trainer, it's got some cool, got these little arms that swing out the sides here. It'll be, keep this nice and stable on the ground, plus a little tray for your front tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down on the ground. We'll get the bike on it. I'll show you how you get the bike on this. So I'm just gonna set this down on the ground this way. I'll just, this way I can show you how we get the bike on to this and then I'll switch it around because it'll be better facing this way for what I'm actually gonna do here. But let's get, uh, we'll get the rear tire off the bike and then transfer it over to here. So it's nice to have a proper Boost 148 rear axle finally. Okay, so then we can just put this on here now. Okay, now one thing I will note here that you will want to do is put in a little uh, disc brake spacer. Yeah, so they, you wanna make sure 
you get the spacer in here. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but you just put a little spacer. You guys see that there? Just got the spacer in the brake so I don't accidentally squeeze it and mess it up. One other thing I will note when I'm doing this training, uh, I just started this a week ago, so I'm not an expert at any, by any stretch of the imagination, but I've been using clipless uh, pedals for the trainer. I just think using clipless pedals on the trainer makes a lot more sense than flats for training anyways, and I had these anyways, so just thought I'd mention that, that I'm gonna be using clipless on here. So this is the setup I'm gonna be running. I have a, basically my laptop just hooked up to an external monitor in front of my bike. I'm gonna be running Zwift. So we're just getting Zwift loaded up here. Got our laptop and monitor and the bike all ready to go. So once the, this fires up, the trainer the light should be blue and ready to go. One thing I will show you guys here while we're waiting, I got this quad lock. Actually, I've had it for a long time, uh, but I got a new case for my phone uh, that'll match my new phone. So now I can put uh, my phone on here and Zwift has a companion app that you can load. And just make sure you actually load the companion app and not the actual Zwift app. You can run Zwift on your phone, but in this case, we're just gonna run the companion app on your phone. And it's nice just to have quick access to uh, some commands on your phone while you're doing this here. So there we go, connected to the power source cadence and controllable, it's all should be connected. And we can continue on now. So when you're in Zwift for the first time, a couple different options. Um, you have London or Watopia. I think sometimes it'll allow you to choose New York as well. I like Watopia myself. You can just, I like to just jump in and do a route. You can just pick something easy. I'll just pick something easy here just so I can show you guys how it works. We'll just do like this volcano circuit. It's only four kilometers, but it'll show you guys how this all works. So the companion app, you can basically, it'll just load up the map and everything on here for you. So it has some controls on here and you can view your progress and your, and your uh, power and everything as you go. They are, do have some training uh, stuff you can do, but I think just to jump in doing a route is the easiest thing to do. All right, so then you just basically just start uh, pedaling and your rider on screen will start reacting to your inputs. You can see the power meter up in the top left hand side of the screen. And all your pertinent information right dead ahead on the top of the screen, your speed. So it does give you options to choose the routes. You can use your actually phone to do this to select which direction you're going to go. You can see on the right hand side, the top corner of the screen is sort of a map of where you're going. And if you look at the very bottom of that little window, you kind of get an idea of the elevation. Uh, right now we're just on a 0% grade, so it's nice and easy. You will notice with most mountain bikes, 11 speed mountain bikes or 12 speed mountain bikes, whether you know a 10 or 11 is your highest gear that you might spin out a little bit easy on a mountain bike. It's not maybe designed perfectly for training, but it's all I have and it'll have to do. So this is just giving you guys sort of a quick rundown of how Zwift works. I know the first couple times I was on here, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Still have lots to learn, but uh, I've done a few rides now, so a little bit better understanding of how this all works. So 
looking forward to getting the legs warmed up and ready for the season instead of uh, coming out in the spring and being super out of shape. So this is a pretty flat route we're on. But again, just wanted to do a quick route on here to show you guys what it's all about. See if I really get into this, I spin out pretty easily. Like I can't really do much better than that. So there is some mountain bike stuff uh, on Zwift, but oh, you'll see now I'm on a, a grade, so I'm gonna have to shift. Oh, that was quick, okay. But there is a mountain bike course on here somewhere, but you need to get to level 12 before that's unlocked and I'm only on level five, so. You can even coast downhill. This is definitely not the same as riding outside, but it's better than doing nothing. All right guys, so that was just a quick video showing you guys sort of an introduction to smart training and using Zwift. I've got the Sarah's H3 trainer. Just wanna do a quick video showing you guys how to jump into Zwift, how to actually start using it. I know when I first jumped in, it was a little, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, so I wanted to do a quick video, show you guys that. If you wanna uh, catch me on Zwift, uh, search for Tugi Hauser, you'll find me on there. Maybe we can go for a ride on there together. So like I said, hoping I can get the legs up to speed for springtime. It is just the beginning of February, so I'm a little bit behind where I want it to be this time of year, but I'm gonna to try to be doing this three or four times a week to get the legs ready for the spring. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. As always, hit the subscribe down in the corner if you haven't already, it's free. Very much appreciated. Lots coming for you on the channel this year, so stay tuned. And as always, keep your feet on the pedals. Oh, shut your face, Tubi Hauser.